Hey, if you've got one of these Ford F-150 EcoBoost uh, 3.5 motor, this one happens to be a 2013 with illuminated check engine light and codes, I want to get this right, P012B or P012C and or codes P0111, then I got a video for you. You're watching the Car Doctor channel. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'm Tim. I'm here at my repair shop, Donor Automotive in Anchorage, Alaska, and I got this 2013 F-150. This uh, tip's gonna apply to uh, a broader year model range of EcoBoost 3.5 motors, experiencing a check engine light. As I said, stored codes P0111, P012 Bravo, or P012 Charlie, turbocharger, intake air temperature slash pressure sensor. Uh, there is a TSB regarding this. Um, you wanna look at Ford TSB 14-0082. Um, it talks a lot about this. Um, basically, the way it's laid out in the TSB is if you uh, are getting this code and it's and it's actually a an active code then it basically says to uh, replace the sensor and the wiring connector running to it um, I don't ever do just a sensor on these I always do it in conjunction with the connector there's lots of problems with the connector but there could be problems with the wiring harness itself but uh, um, I have never run into that, but I do have a quick test to verify that your wiring is okay. Uh, anyway, here's the store codes that I pulled up on the scanner. Um, they're active. So when you get that, uh, I'll bounce back to the data on this. But I'm going to show you a quick test that you can verify your wiring is good back to the PCM. Come out here to the sensor, which basically, uh, I'm gonna call it a mass airflow sensor, but if you call it a mass airflow sensor, you might get in trouble. They might yell at you. It's actually a turbo charger intake air temperature slash pressure sensor. Um, and this, of course, is a connector, a four pin female connector uh and the sensor itself but uh basically a mass airflow sensor for a turbocharged vehicle measuring the temperature and pressure here on the intake side of things and uh if you want to test your wiring back to the pcm you can do so by jumpering a couple of the terminals and monitoring your intake air temperature uh, at the same time. So I was talking about uh, verifying that your wiring is good back to PCM. What you want to do to detect that is pull your connector off of the intake air pressure sensor. And if we jumper terminals one and two here on the female connector, I've got one and two jumpered. And then we look over here at our scan tool in the engine management data. Uh, intake air temperature voltage this one here not intake air 2 but main intake air temperature voltage it should read 0 volts but uh, as you can see uh, I'm not getting a real good connection there we go it's it's fluctuating so somewhere in this connector it's actually uh, jacked up They've got a lot of this white dielectric crap on it, so I don't know if that has something to do with it. But if I fiddle with it enough, I can get it to zero. And then uh, look back here, uh, if you jumper terminals, a lot of that white stuff. Terminals two and three, you should have five volts, which I've got here. 
So we verified that the wiring back to the PCM is, is good. It's just the connector is definitely suspect. And we're going to go ahead and replace the sensor as well. But uh, we're only going to use Motocraft parts in this case. Uh, readily available. It's a known problem. So uh, you should have plenty of local supply on this one. Okay, there's our Motocraft sensor. And uh, basically a little inverted Torx bit to remove it. It. Got a little o ring on there, so make sure that is installed correctly. Okay. And now we'll replace the connector in. All right, cut it. Okay, here's your uh, connector kit. Comes with everything you need. I'm probably going to solder it instead of using the provided crimpers. Eh, we'll see. Um, I'm just going to start one at a time from the end so that I don't get confused. But we'll just hack these off. add my crimpers here we'll try this I don't really like these might hear my heater kicking on. It's about zero degrees outside and uh, the week before Thanksgiving and my gas bill is shooting through the ceiling. Okay, I'm gonna start on the end with number one, which is yellow and brown. No turning back now. Ooh, pretty, pretty thin wire. Number one. the uh, green with a brown stripe. Okay.
if you're wondering about this light I got, this is a new snap-on light. Um, don't really think it's all the greatest. I've already cracked the base. It, it works good until you run into it and knock it off of something and it breaks. Then it doesn't work as good. I like those little puck lights. All right. Got those screwed and melted. Reconnect our new sensor. Secure the wiring. And there we go. Not the prettiest thing, but that'll work. Now, just a matter of clearing the codes. I'll confirm the repairs by, uh, I'll probably park it outside, monitor the ambient temperature sensor, see that things kind of match up within a few degrees of each other but uh, I have no doubt we've uh, corrected the issue. Uh, pretty common deal, and I hope this video was helpful. Appreciate you watching, subscribing, and I will catch you next time on the Car Doctor channel. Take care.